pack rafting is boats and gear. And Eric's laid out some gear for us. Eric, walk us through the paddles. Yeah, so just like there are different boats for different objectives, there are different paddles for different objectives and, you know, ideal use for different different boats. Um, over the years, I've tried to figure out what the best paddle was for solo pack rafting, and I figured out it's three paddles. Um, first, my favorite lightweight paddle is the Aquabound Whiskey, uh, one of the best paddles on the market for pack rafting. Um, like any good pack rafting paddle, it breaks down into four pieces for easy packability. Uh, so if you want to stick it inside your uh, backpack, it goes boop, right inside, doesn't stick out, you know, when you're bushwhacking. Put on hitting, brush Yeah, put on brush and that kind of thing. Uh, these are made with fiberglass pa paddles, paddle blades, and carbon shaft, just like most of the rest of my paddles here. And I like to pair this with the Refuge, because when I'm going with the Refuge, I'm going really lightweight. So I like mm. to go with the really lightweight paddle. I'm not likely to be paddling advanced whitewater. And because these are thin and light, they are subject theoretically to breakage more so than some of the other burlier paddles. Do these paddles come in a standard length? So they don't have a standard length. They come in lots of different length options and that's really a matter of preference. Uh, I've found that 200 centimeters is the perfect length for solo pack rafting. Uh, a lot of kayakers go much shorter than that, but kayakers sit in a narrow boat closer they to the water. Okay. Exactly, with pack rafts, with the bigger tubes, having a little bit of extra length is good, but you don't want a long paddle because you really want a high angle paddle paddle stroke. Mm -hmm. And in order to get that, you need a short paddle. So I gotcha. found that 200 is the perfect length. Does your height matter at all? Yeah, height does matter. Um, you know, I, I think uh, a shorter person might be better off with maybe a slightly shorter paddle. I've recommended a 197 for a couple friends of mine who are on the shorter side. Um, but I think ultimately uh, 200 is really just a good length that got it. for the beginner, you know, if you want to, if you want something that is going to work for you, 200 is going to work. Got it. So on the other end of the spectrum is the Werner powerhouse, uh, as far as burliness and, uh, and toughness. Now this one, uh, is about 42 ounces where the Aquabound whiskey is about 26 Six. ounces. Wow. Um, but this thing is bomb proof. Uh, if you're ever in an environment where you either can't afford to break your paddle, like it's a life or death thing if you break your right. paddle, or if you're just paddling roadside whitewater and you don't feel like you need to bang up your more delicate lightweight blade, um, the powerhouse is awesome. Super stiff, super bomber, still breaks down into four pieces. So if I did want to carry it into the back country, um, I could do that. Has some feather options on this particular design. Uh, but yeah, that's a really awesome uh, paddle for really dedicated to whitewater. It's a workhorse. Yeah, and it's heavy to carry. So usually I'm not going to that to carry into the back country. I'll go for this one instead. So this is the Werner Cory Vrecken. Um, and what you'll notice about the powerhouse and the Cory Vrecken is that they have a really big blade surface, um, over 700 square centimeters, uh, whereas the whiskey is closer to 600. And that's because in white water, you really want a big blade surface to capture that uh, frothy white water. You get you get better contact mm -hmm. in frothy water uh, with a bigger blade, obviously. And the Cory Vrecken is very similar to the powerhouse in design. The blade shape's a little bit different. Also, uh, it has a more adjustable feather angle, anywhere from uh, 60 left to 60 right in increments of 15 degrees. Um, but it also weighs about 10 ounces less than the powerhouse. Wow, so difference. this is this for years has been my go-to kind of middle of the road, do everything paddle. Not as light as the whiskey, uh, not as burly as the powerhouse, but a really, really good middle of the road uh, paddle. And it served me really, really well for a long time. It's still four pieces. It's still four pieces. Um, and I paddled uh, class four with Corey Vrecken a ton, and it served me really well. Yeah, I banged it up and rocky creeks and it hasn't broken on me yet. So so I'm assuming, so newer pack rafters have a choice between two piece and four piece paddles. You're strong on the four piece paddle. I am and not everybody feels that way. I think, uh, you know, there are some people out there still using two piece. Actually, there are people out there doing pack rafting trips with one piece paddles and they just carry them. Um, you know, obviously that's easier if you're in the Arctic and there's no yeah. brush anywhere yeah. or whatever, but anytime you're bushwhacking um, or even just walking on a trail with low overhanging branches, can't tell you how many times it's just driven me crazy 
you know, getting my paddle right. caught up in the branches over my head because I got the two piece sticking and it up. It kind of defeats the ability of the pack raft to go into the back country if there's stuff sticking out of your pack. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about portability, right? So why not, you know, extend portability to the paddle as well? And the design of these paddles is just the, their, their tolerance and fit with, is so good. Uh, honestly, if you gave me the powerhouse four piece, and blindfolded me, I wouldn't be able to tell you it wasn't a one piece because they're just so beautifully constructed. How does the blade size and shape affect endurance? Yeah, good question. So uh, typically with a bigger blade, and I use again, the Cory Brecken with the big blade for pretty much everything. I paddle a lot of flat water with it too. But obviously if you have bad paddling form and you're using too much of your arms, um, or if you just don't consider yourself a super strong paddler, Using a bigger blade in flat water, it can tend to tire you uh, more quickly than a smaller blade. You could save a little bit of energy by using a smaller paddle blade in a higher, slightly higher cadence uh, in flat water if you're not quite a strong paddler. Um, but I haven't found that to be an issue uh, as long as you keep good form. If I want to learn good form, yeah. And if you want to learn good form, sign up for one of my classes. Um, <laughs> okay. Honestly, it's a it's a work in progress and a lifetime pursuit to really perfect your paddling form. I practice it always when I'm out. It's still something, you know, everybody takes for granted that forward paddle stroke is just being like, oh, I know a forward power right. paddle stroke. Get it in pulse. But it's it's not it's not quite that simple. Um, so it's really important to really develop that, especially for adventure racers, because you tend to be paddling for such long distances keeping good form really will help you go that much farther and that much faster. Okay, so these paddles don't look cheap. Uh, tell me about how much how much, uh, how much I have to spend for one of these things. Uh, yeah, they're not cheap. Uh, the Werners, they all are in excess of 300. Um, I don't know the prices specifically off the top of my head. I know the whiskey is around 375 retail. Um, and the Cory Brecken is 360, I believe. The powerhouse might be a little bit less, uh, I think in the realm of 320 or 330. Um, but, you know, again, like, like with anything, the alpacas aren't the cheapest boats out there either. But with this type of endeavor, I have found that trying to get away with inexpensive equipment um, is just gonna end up costing you more money in the long run. Uh, because you're going to try those cheap paddles and those cheap boats and you're going to get tired of them and trade up anyway. Well, right. And it's the buy once, cry once. <laughs> there you go. Right. You know, yeah. you, you do it once yeah. and it's, you get out of the way. And if you if you do it over time, a $300 paddle makes sense because you, you benefit in terms of distance, how far you can travel. And plus, they, these are hardy paddles. They're not, they're not prone to breaking easily. No, that's a great point. I mean, they're built so well that, you know, if you take good care of them, just like with the boats, you take good care of them, you get a lot, a lot of use out of them.